Well, it's nearly time for summer. Yeah. You gonna go to a theme park? Uh, not do? after this, maybe. Well, you know, not an abandoned one, at least. Yeah, not an abandoned one. Today we're not just talking about abandoned theme parks, though. We're talking about the backstories behind them, all the yeah. creepy stuff that went down before they closed. Yeah, we've got accidents, incidents, explosions, and some creepy ghosts. Uh, they might be abandoned, but their infamous legacies live on. Let's check it out. What once was Holy Land in Waterbury, Connecticut is now just a series of dilapidated structures. Kind of looks like a bomb went off in this place actually, but it doesn't just look unsettling. It was also the site of a gruesome crime. Park opened in 1960, was open for over two decades, closing down in 1984, and ever since people have been sneaking into the place and vandalizing it. Now one night in 2010, two friends, Chloe Ottman and Francisco Cruz, decided they'd break in and explore. And this is just one of the many disturbing cases that goes to show just how little we really know about people sometimes. These two had known each other for a couple years and Chloe didn't think Francisco had any ill intentions. She ended up turning down his advances though and instead of accepting this like a normal level headed man should do, Francisco forced himself on her before taking her life. He then discarded of her body in the woods and fled the scene but eventually he confessed to killing killing Chloe and led police to the body. He was sentenced to 55 years in prison. Next up we have the Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. Haunted, cursed, and downright evil. The land in which the park was built in West Virginia originally belonged to the Shawnee Native American peoples, but in 1783 a European settler named Mitchell Clay decided to build a home on the grounds. One day Clay had to run into town and so he did, leaving his two sons and his daughter at home tending to the fields. During this time things got pretty dark. The Shawnee people approached the trio, fired a projectile into one, impaled a another and burned the third at the stake. The grounds later became a burial site for the tribe, but not a nice one though. It was more of a burial site for their victims, 13 of which were uncovered by construction crews during the construction of Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. But did that stop the developers? No, of course not. They wanted to make money, and so they went ahead and built the park on the cursed lands anyways. Good idea? No, not really. During the park's years of operation, six mysterious deaths occurred on the grounds. Drownings, crushings, and other freak accidents were among the reasons for the fatalities. Well, that and the fact that the land was clearly cursed. Rocky Point Amusement Park in Rhode Island brought joy to families for a long time, but it will also always be remembered for an incredibly dark incident in 1893. On a bright August morning, Frank Sheffield took his daughter Maggie to the park. They spent the day together and everything seemed fine until something suddenly snapped in Frank's brain. He took Maggie down to the shoreline and killed her, having hit her on the head with a rock. Now, something hadn't been right with Frank for a long time. About a week before his daughter was born, he'd suffered a head injury and just wasn't the same after that. He was unstable, but given the lack of knowledge of brain injuries and, and mental health at the time, he was never properly treated. And the park stayed open for years after this tragic case, finally closing down in 1995. The area was reopened to the public in 2011, but it's not an amusement park anymore. Just a regular open park with uh, only a few remnants of the theme park still remaining. Next up, Joyland Amusement Park, which was anything but joyful. The amusement park opened in 1942 in Wichita, Kansas. Originally a small park with just a few rides, it grew to include bumper cars, carnival games, and even a haunted house. The grounds also often hosted concerts and outdoor festivals as well. Of all the events to occur on the grounds, however, there is one in particular that really stands out among the rest. The death of Michael King, who was impaled to death by four men after he confronted them for sneaking into the park after hours. Two were charged for the crime, two were not due to their age. After that the park did not shut down though, in fact it grew even more. But the years that followed were not without complications. A handful of accidental deaths occurred on the grounds. Patrons falling off roller coasters, workers crushed by roller coasters, you know, carnival stuff. Eventually after another person plunged to their death after falling off of a ferris wheel, the park ran into a series of financial issues, obviously, and they eventually shut down in 2004. The grounds sat empty 
empty for years until they were purchased in 2018 by Gregory and Tina who plan on turning the space into an event venue for concerts, traveling, carnivals, and weddings. Pretty morbid place to get married if you ask me. Ever wanted to visit a theme park haunted by a ghost woman and her serpentine daughter? Well you could have before 2000 when Kajanuma Leisureland in Japan closed after 20 years of operation. Now all that remains of the park is the ferris wheel and a handful of other rusted rides overgrown with weeds, but the grounds are still said to be cursed. You see, right next to the park is a pond, the pond of the ghost woman. Legend goes that a beautiful woman used to live by the pond which was full of snakes. Well one day the woman mysteriously gave birth, but what came out of her wasn't human. It was a serpentine creature that slithered away into the pond. That night, she heard the sound of cries filling the air. They sounded like an infant's cries, and every night from that point on, she'd hear them. Night after night was restless with the moans and cries of her serpentine offspring slowly driving her mad. Well, instead of just moving away, she decided to take her own life, cursing the land before drowning herself in the pond. And her tormented spirit is still said to haunt the land to this day. Next up, Dreamland Park. When the park opened in the 1930s, it didn't last long. Likely because it was less of an amusement park and more of a front for illegal gambling and mafia headquarters. The park would officially shut down in the 1950s, and in 1969, two decomposing bodies would turn up on the ground. Marilyn Sheckler and Glenn Eckett, who had last been seen earlier that year. The bodies were discovered in shallow graves, a calling card of the mafia at the time. The man had had been hit in the head with a projectile fired from a handheld weapon and the woman had been violated and to death. The night the pair went missing, 10 members of the pagan motorcycle gang were arrested for beating and impaling three men with large blades in the parking lot of the grounds, making all of them suspects in the deaths of Marilyn and Glenn. Two members of the gang, Robert and Leroy, were convicted of the crime of killing Marilyn and Glenn. They were charged to life in prison without parole, but they maintained their innocence until they died in their cells. So did they do it or is someone walking around? They're probably dead by now. This was a long time ago, but who knows? You tell me if you know. Next up we have Brandywine Springs in Wilmington, Delaware. This may be the oldest theme park on the list. It was open from 1886 to 1923. I didn't even know they had theme parks in 1886. There's nothing much left of the old theme park now, but Brandywine Springs was a bustling amusement park. There was a castle house, train, wooden roller coaster, and a restaurant. It was also the site of a violent crime in 1916, when Samuel Gongus, a man deeply infatuated with a waitress at the park's restaurant, Catherine Bedeke, committed a horrific act. After Catherine rejected his romantic advances, Gongus' obsession turned deadly. In a fit of rage, he shot and killed Catherine and her friend Aretti Nichols, but he didn't stop there. He then set fire to the restaurant, the photography gallery, and some concession stands. Now, all that remains of this theme park now, it's basically just a regular park, but it is said to, of course, be haunted by these tormented spirits. Magic Harbor is next on our list today. Once a thriving amusement park with roller coasters, bumper cars, ferris wheels, and even an arcade located just south of Myrtle Beach in California, the park was forced to shut its doors on Labor Day in 1976 after Harry Koch, the park's owner, along with his stepson, Carl Derrick, were killed. After Franklin Loftus fired twice at the pair while they stood outside their trailer on the grounds of the park. The killing went unsolved for almost a decade, but Franklin was eventually arrested in 1982, and it was determined that he committed the crimes after getting into an argument with the park's owner over workman's comp. In 1984, the park was reopened under new ownership, but after a young woman was launched out of a roller coaster and died of her injuries, the park was sued for $12 million. The bad publicity, the lawsuit, and the loss of income caused the park to shut down for the last time in 1993. Only in Japan would you find a theme park entirely based on Gulliver's Travels. Uh, the most 
recognizable part of Gulliver's kingdom was the giant sized statue of Gulliver. The creative risks taken in Japan are something I will just I will never cease to admire. Unfortunately though this theme park was a failure. It opened in 1997 and it was only around for about 10 years. There's not much left of the place now but even during its operation there was always darkness lurking around this pleasant looking family friendly park. For one the park sat right next to a particular forest. One that if you've been using the internet for any length of time you've heard of. It's the forest where countless Japanese citizens have taken their own lives. Then there's a nearby village where the Am Shinrikyo cult who carried out the sarin gas attacks had their headquarters. They also produced their deadly nerve gas in the village. The park opened just two years after that incident and visitors would often say they could smell the chemicals still lingering in the air. That's just icky. And finally, to finish off our list today, we have Pripyat Amusement Park, the amusement park whose doors never actually opened. Ever. On May 1st of 1968, the Ukrainian theme park had planned on opening its doors to the public, but those plans never came to fruition as just five days before the park's scheduled launch, the Chernobyl disaster occurred in the city. While reports vary, it's estimated that 2 to 50 people were killed in the initial explosions and dozens more died or became extremely ill in the following months due to radiation sickness. After the incident, it's rumored that the park might have opened for just one day in an attempt to calm the public and bring joy to the people of the city after the disastrous event before residents were forced to evacuate Pripyat never to return. Today the city is an almost abandoned ghost town but it is open for tourism. The majority of the town was decontaminated of radiation but certain areas like grave sites were missed in the cleanup due to fear of disturbing the dead. If visiting a town full of tragedy and radioactive graveyards is on your bucket list this place might just be for you. Uh, I always wonder if, if uh, the exhibition is ever gonna shut down. Oh my god. Because I think every year, I, I don't know why I'm smiling, <laughs> but every uh, every year someone dies there. I'm Dude, really? Pretty much. I didn't know that. I mean, there, there have been deaths. I mean, rides. Uh, one I mean, year, traveling a bunch carnivals. Of, yeah, yeah, one year people died from the food. Yeah, anyway. I was really looking forward to going. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I try. To, I usually go every year, but anyway, yeah, so, you know, I like ones. risking my life. That's a little bit about us. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I've been your host, James. I've been your host, Anna. We'll catch you in the next video. A ri Ar no, not Arkansas. <laughs> I was going to make fun of you again. <laughs> <clears throat> After, oh my God, this is the dumbest sentence ever. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm having a stroke. Oh my God. You tell me if you know. Are you the person walking around impaling people? A lot of men who can't take no for an answer. Jeez. Yeah. At theme parks. <laughs> At theme parks, yeah. Maybe best to avoid. <clears throat> That's the ultimate ride being launched from the roller coaster.